Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 300 in our series. We're continuing with the title, Beginning of Sorrows. We want to take a look at the scripture, the picture the scripture paints about the beginning of sorrows. What we find is the beginning of sorrows will begin on one day. In the period of one day, everything is going to change radically. Scripture indicates the beginning of sorrow starts with the Lord's pronouncing a judgment upon the human race. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, he shall give a shout against all the inhabitants of the earth. What does that mean? It means, basically, that the judgment is going to release evil spirits to incite calamity on the earth. This calamity is going to overtake every single person or group that will be operating outside the will of God on that day. Turn to Luke 21st chapter verse 31, uh, 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day, that day, that day come upon you unawares. Verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, every single individual that breathes air on that day if he's operating outside the will of God is going to come under his judgment calamity is going to overtake him turn to Zephaniah second chapter Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Talking to the whole human race. And out of the whole human race, he's addressing the meek. What does that mean? The one who has a tender heart. Which have wrought his judgment. In other words, they're not doing the thing that they're supposed to do. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So he's talking here basically to Christians who are knowingly living what they know they should not be doing. Not doing what they know they should be doing. 
you have organized religion here where Christians, as you might faintly un have experience in, that are playing games with God. I think I might have an experience. You might have, yeah. well, talking to each one of us. Now we read it in Luke, we read it in Zephaniah, there's going to come a day and God is going to pour out a judgment on the whole human race. The only ones that are going to be hid are the ones that are doing His will on that day. Those that are playing head games with God and fooling themselves are going to incur calamity. It says it's going to be like a net dropping over them. They are going to find themselves struggling and being overcome by circumstances of their own doing. God is tired of people playing games with him. When it talks about roaring from on high, everybody's going to hear his voice. It's not going to be a melodious sound. It's going to be a rage, particularly against those that have incurred his wrath. Mm -hmm. but let's go on. We're going to see some examples of what people have to deal with. Ezekiel 7, verses 10 to 11. Now this pertains basically to events and activities taking place here in America. At this time, people are going to be in a lifestyle which is totally an abomination in the sight of God. They're going to be going about their nefarious activities and in this one day is going to overtake them. Verse 10. Behold the day, behold it has come. The morning is gone forth. <coughs> The rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. What is it saying? It's saying it's going to start off as a normal day of activity. People are going to be doing their abominable lifestyle, and to them it's going to be just another day, and all of a sudden it's going to be interrupted. <clears throat> they're going to hear the judgment, and then they're going to find themselves caught up in inescapable calamity. Verse 11, violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. What does this mean? This means the multitudes are going to be caught up in activities that are ultimately going to destroy them. And there won't be anybody that will escape. There won't be anybody to mourn. There won't be anybody to bury them. They're going to be overtaken by total, unmitigated disaster. Turn to Ezekiel 32, verse 18. And the way the judgment is going to fall, it's going to fall in a multitude of different things, commensurate, commensurate with the activities of the individual. <clears throat> what we read in Ezekiel 7 deals with the mercantile system. People are being bought and sold, trafficking. That's going to be shut down by the wrath of God, and everybody participating in it is going to be wiped out. Here you have a scenario of war. People in beginning to are on the verge of battle. And what takes place? It's talking about whole countries that are surrounding Israel with the intent of going in and wiping around. Ezekiel 32, verse 18. Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations into the neither parts of the earth with them that go down to the pit. Drop down to verse <coughs> 22. Asher is there in all her company 
His graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Then he goes on to elucidate specific nations, Syria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Hezbollah, the, all the groups that you read about today and hear about on the news. They're all going to be rounded up, destroyed by the, the, the influence of evil that will overtake them. In other words, they're going to be incited to destroy themselves. Now, drop down to verse 32. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. So it's talking about God's judgment. He sets in motion destruction. I mean the Lord? Yes. Yes. He talks about... He's caused his terror in the land of the living. Turn back to Luke, 21st chapter. And remember, this is all happening on one day. Luke 21. Verses 10 to 11. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, incitation to kill amongst themselves. A kingdom against kingdom, incitation to destruction among themselves. They're going to kill each other off. But it's talking about racial groups, ethnic groups, countries all basically incited to self-destruction. Verse 11, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilence and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. The whole creation is going to be going into convolution, convulsions. Why? Because the Creator is has uh, is manifesting judgment on the creation. Now turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 34 to 37. Remembering that this takes place on a global scale. Howl ye shepherds and cry. He's talking about organized religious leaders. Howl ye shepherds and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock, for the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished. You shall fall like a pleasant vessel, and the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and in howling of the principle of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord had spoiled their pasture. The peaceful habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. In other words, the landscape is radically changed from a peaceful, pleasant, <coughs> agrarian region in which the elites are flourishing the leadership 
organized religion that God is going to withdraw life from that place and it's going to become a hell with them <clears throat> in it. And they're going to suddenly find themselves in a region of alien existence in which they are in torment all in one day. So is this hell? Yes. Yes. Everything is going to change. God is going to turn this place upside down. He's going to take down the conditions that prevail that cause deception blind people he's going to take down the people that are responsible and the intelligences that are responsible for it and he's going to bring in conditions in which those that were formerly in captivity will be able to go free it will be open to receive what he has for them. Jeremiah 23. Verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. In one day, the snare is going to fall upon them, overcome them, and destroy them. Notice what it says. I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. The things that they have done are going to fall out to their own destruction. Verse 3, and I will gather, I will gather, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Same day, what is set in motion is a, an atmosphere in which those who have a tender heart, those who are serving the Lord, will find themselves in a new reality. Amen. Amen indeed. Now, this is where the prototokos, this is where freedom, this is where God begins his final work. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 46. then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. When does this start? Beginning of Saurus. Exactly. The day the judgment falls is the same day <clears throat> Prototokos is going to be given the door to open where they can go forth begin to do what God's called them to do. Notice what he Spring says. Things. Should yeah. the teachers expect to see elders appearing a few days, a few weeks before the shout? No. So not until the shout will we see a single yeah, because elder. Because it won't be free. Conditions won't change until the shout. Everything takes place in one day. All things are going to change one day. We're going to take a look at that. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Turn to Luke 12, 
verse 42. What we have in Matthew 24, the ones called from eternity, who are willing at that time to embark upon what they've been called to do from eternity. Now Luke 12, 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall, shall, in this temporal time, make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? So you have an opportunity for the individual to take advantage of this one day. I'm going to lay it all down to take up the call to feed God's flock. He makes a determination. The other one has already made the determination. So the two come together and go forth as one. Now, what will immediately happen after the pronouncement, well, I won't say immediately, but shortly after the pronouncement is a proclamation of the gospel of the kingdom. But back to Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. The angels preach the gospel from the heavens to the whole world. Now just prior to this, you have <clears throat> the proclamation of judgment, and people are undergoing tremendous anguish and suffering because they are out of the will of God, have rejected the will of God. You have the rise of the fourth empire, which is fragmenting the earth. You have convulsions going on in the skies. Tremendous upheavals taking place on the earth. Luke 21, about verse 8 says, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, signs and sights in the heavens. All this happening at the same time. Human race can't deal with it. But those who are open to the Spirit will be able to deal with it. The first ones are going to be able to deal with it are the ones that become martyrs. Look at verse 8 and 9. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is a group that see the convulsions and everything taking place and make a decision that they are now going to totally commit to the Lord. Well, it's too late for them. They're not going to be called to feed God's people, but they will save their souls. They become martyrs. The other group are the ones that have committed to do the right thing and want to give God's sheep meet. The ones called from eternity, the ones called from temporality, become one group of teachers. They go forth, and this sets the stage for the progression toward the gathering. Gospel is preached. Scripture indicates, then the teachers will speak the things contained in the book of Revelation to those in their charge. The book in the heaven of heavens is going to be open for the teachers 
to teach the precepts of God. Turn to Revelation 22. Verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man <clears throat> that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. This book. What book? The book that's in eternity. The book that he's telling John he's the custodian over with the other groups that guard the book. The, the, the connection is now open for those on earth to receive the revelation that's contained in the book for this time. They are going to promulgate, speak... Notice what it says. It doesn't just say the book. It says the prophecies, prophecies, prophecies of this book. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. So he's talking about the teachers are going to be given through the spirit of prophecy, the word of prophecy. Now, when they do this, the people that hear the word of the prophecy are warned. I testify to every man that heareth. Heareth. Who's hearing? Your, your disciples. <clears throat> the people of the earth are going to hear what you have to say. You're talking about the Georgica's teachers. I'm talking about the Prodicus teachers are going to be pro promulgating, proclaiming the prophecies of the book to their students. Okay. The students are the one that hear. The teachers don't have to hear. They already know. No, but the, They're I teaching. Was thinking it's proclaimed from the heavens by the heavenly counterparts. No. So everybody hears. No. They just proclaim the gospel. you got to teach the gospel. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's proclaimed the gospel from the heavens by the heavenly counterparts. The detail, which is what you're referring to, is taught by the prophetic teachers. You. Yes. Go ahead. The depth of the of the eternal book. Are we going to be sitting there reading it, or is it going to we're going to automatically know it? You're going to be speaking it because the spirit of prophecy that's in you is, is going to receive it mm -hmm. from the book, so that you can speak it to your students. Praise the Lord. They're going to hear what you have. To say this is what we're being prepared for now the warning is to the people that hear <clears throat> for I testify unto every man that heareth so you're not going to be reading to somebody from a book you are going to be the Oracle of God proclaiming just as Jesus didn't read from a book he spoke people are going to hear what you have to say which is a word that you have received the logos you have received from the book and the warning is to the people that hear what you are speaking. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God will add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So we see the timing of this. This is the timing in which you're entering into the end of the age. Everybody that hears you is going to be around at the time when the judgments are going to fall. Either they'll be in heaven or they're going to be on earth. They'll make the rapture or they'll miss the rapture, but they're going to be somewhere at the time of the judgments. Those fallen angelic beings who look to live for an extra day or an extra week or whatever the, the time period it is, will they pretend to hear this and correct themselves to repent? No, they're out of the picture. It doesn't have anything to do with them. Mm. It's not for them. Mm. It's but for they're going to hear it. Oh, sure, but it doesn't mean anything. Sure. They can't participate in it. Sure. They're under judgment. 
Verse 19, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part, his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. This is only can pertain to one group of people, the teachers. Why? Because it's only the teachers that have part in the book of life. Only the teachers that have part in the holy city. Only the teachers whose heritage, inheritance, is waiting for them when they finish progressing to the gathering point. Now what does this warning mean to the teachers? You notice it talks about the hearers if you add anything. The teachers is if you take away. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to take away? It means if you limit. If you do not proclaim the whole counsel of God, you're in trouble. If you leave it out. Yes. You're going to be guilty of the blood of the people that didn't hear because you withdrew, you left out. That's heavy. So the people that didn't didn't hear, they're, they're doomed? Well, no. <clears throat> but it's talking about the teacher that neglected to give them what they needed to receive. That's just like the the, men, the, the leaders of organized religion. They leave out. They will not give you the whole counsel of God. Now, those who are limited by not hearing it mm -hmm. when they get to the heavens, mm -hmm. will there be in a situation where the Father says, you didn't learn this when you were down there. Stay here for a while, acclimate, and he will teach you. No. What the Father will simply do is give another teacher to tell what this guy didn't get. Whilst they're still on the... Sure. Okay, got it. He's going to make sure that, that his they son's get, here. Gotcha. Okay. 